Hello dear students. Today we shall be discussing the topic depression in freezing point, a colligative property. Before we go on to discuss how it is a colligative property, we will break down this topic to first of all freezing. What is freezing? Simple, you have been doing it from your uh, class 6, class 7 where you talk about freezing and you talk about melting. The change of a solid to the liquid state is called as melting. The reverse process, conversion of a liquid to the solid state is what we call as freezing. Now we shall go a step ahead and we shall talk about something called as equilibrium, a dynamic equilibrium between the solid and the liquid phase of a substance when freezing happens. In other words, what will happen is at the freezing point, the solid is changing into liquid, the liquid can convert into the solid. So we say it's a dynamic, that means it does not stop. It is continuously happening. At 0 degrees Celsius, we know that ice can turn to water and water can also turn to ice. So this is a dynamic equilibrium represented by the arrows over here. At this particular point, now why are we saying, what do you mean by point? Point means the temperature. The temperature at which uh, liquid changes into the solid or the solid changes into the liquid. If you talk about solid changing into the liquid, it is the melting point, whereas the temperature at which a liquid changes into the solid is the freezing point. This is just the terminology we talk about in terms of the change we are talking about. At the freezing point, what will happen is, talking about in terms of vapor pressure, the vapor pressure of the solid becomes equal to the vapor pressure of the liquid. Here, if you see the graph, on the y-axis, we have represented the vapor pressure. On the x-axis, we have temperature. This can be represented as degree Celsius or Kelvin. Here, the vapor pressure of a liquid is higher than the vapor pressure of the solid form. At the freezing point, the vapor pressure of the two substance of the two forms of the same substance is indicated by this point in the graph. This corresponds to the temperature Tf naught. That is the freezing point of the pure solvent. Now when we add a non-volatile solute to the liquid, I have a liquid, the particles on the surface have a tendency to escape as well as condense, right? This is vapor pressure. Now, when we add a non-volatile solute to this, non-volatile means something which will not convert to the vapor state. So what will happen in such a circumstance is the vapor pressure of the pure liquid will go down, become less. In other words, the temperature at which the vapor pressure of the solid form of the substance and the liquid form is becoming equal becomes lower than the original value indicated by the second part of the graph. So we have the blue lines indicating the pure form. We have the red graph showing the fall in the vapor pressure of a solution. So this red graph meets the blue part of the graph at a certain point, which we shall indicate by Tf dash. That is the vapor pressure of the solution form of the substance containing the non-volatile solute. The difference of the two gives us what we call as the depression in freezing point, the fall in freezing point of the substance. That is Tf0 minus Tf dash. Experimentally, it has been shown that the depression in freezing point is directly proportional to the molality of the solution. Please remember it's molality, not molarity. So, Delta Tf is Kf, 
we put a constant over here since we are talking about freezing it is appropriate to write it as kf into molality so we have introduced the constant over here which we need to define so kf is delta tf divided by molality what if your solution is one molal in that case kf becomes equals to delta tf the depression in freezing point when the molality of the solution is one or unity hence we use the term molal depression constant for kf over here it is also called as cryoscopic constant cryo comes from the greek word low temperature or frozen so since we are talking about freezing we took we use the term cryoscopic constant also for the constant kf in order to give its unit simple if you are taking the temperature in kelvin your uh, mol molality will be molal so we'll have kelvin per molal or if the temperature is in degree celsius so it's degree celsius per molal so we have the unit we have the formula it's a fixed value for a certain substance now delta tf is kf into molality this formula is complete in itself what we are going to do in the next step is just an expansion of the formula for molality what is molality you can refer to the other videos where we have i have specifically explained the various terms we use to express concentration so molality is number of moles of solute present in 1 kg of the solvent so instead of putting the weight of the solvent in kgs we have converted into grams for easier usage and for simplicity so the students do not get confused so delta tf depression in freezing point is kf that is cryoscopic constant weight of the solute molar mass of the solute weight of the solvent converted into kgs so divided by 1000 now we have derived this formula so we can very easily explain now why delta tf that is depression in freezing point is a colligative property if you notice over here delta tf is proportional to the number of moles of the solute in the solution a colligative property is one which is dependent on the number of particles in a solution irrespective of its nature since their delta tf is dependent on the number of solute particles in the solution that is is number of moles hence we say it is a colligative property we use it scientifically we use this concept in order to determine the molar mass of non volatile solute but the only condition is the solution should be dilute because only then it will behave as an ideal solution if you refer to raoult's law those are some of those that was one of the conditions under which a substance Uh, obeys raoult's law then there should be no association or dissociation now this is a very important point that means your substance should not undergo a chemical change or a change in its molecular form when we are carrying out the process of measurement there are substance substances which under low temperature conditions tend to associate that means tend to come together first say for example acetic acid molecules of acetic acid they undergo dimerization due to hydrogen bonding and because of which they will form dimers that means there will be two molecules of acetic acid associated together so we have oh and hydrogen bonding over here so our molecule should not undergo a chemical change like this neither association or dissociation when we carry out the process of measuring the molar mass of the solute there's a very important application of this concept in our in cold countries let us see if you can find out that application for a write up on this whatever is taught here i have included a link to the 
uh, notes for this so it's easier for you to recall at the time of your revision or preparation do let me know your feedback on this have a good day